Hey, don't miss out. In the right lower corner of the YouTube video, you're gonna see that small red mark. Click on it and select the 4K video quality. You are not going to regret it. Those details are important. The views are stunning. Enjoy! Here is one of the very many uh, residential towers that I noticed during my uh, travels in the region that are undergoing facade repairs. This one is approximately 40 years old and in this jurisdiction at this age there is a mandatory recertification required perhaps explaining the repairs visible outside. Here we can see the west elevation and uh, what caught your eye is probably those horizontal lines of bulging stucco approximately along the parameters of slab edges, of the floor slab edges. We could see that they were not addressed by any kind of either movement or control joint, um, nor were any uh, vertical separation lines created in the stucco. They are just bulging and cracking. And this is fairly typical in uh, this uh, region because of the construction practices that are still prevalent till today. Here we can see the east elevation with the areas requiring attention already helpfully marked with a spray paint. And we could see that these roughly coincide with the um, horizontal floor slab edges, the locations of the vertical columns, as well as the natural weakness lines uh, propagating uh, from around the corners of the openings as well as their parameters. There is a sealant bead visible here and there. Apparently there were prior repairs consisting mainly of sealing those cracks. We can see this dotted step-like uh, pattern indicating diagonal crack among the bed and vertical joints of concrete masonry units. And those marks allow us to deduce there is a structural reinforced concrete column behind. Those cracks mark the separation lines between the concrete masonry and the solid cast in concrete structure. Those marks tell us the story about the moisture intrusion paths as well as the general construction of the building where the exterior infill walls were inadequately attached to the structure without leaving the proper movement joint resulting in a random stress distribution causing a seemingly random cracks to appear also within the field of the infill. We could see patches along the corners and edges of balcony slabs indicating uh, probably locations of prior structural repairs um, fairly common in this coastal climate uh, where rebars tend to rust and uh, spoil the concrete and require um, deep structural repairs. And at the terraces we could see further um, spoiled areas marked on the horizontal surfaces. You can also see the uh, spalled concrete areas marked on the underside and on the edge of the balcony slab indicating uh, there would be some major structural repairs necessary as well. These explain the safety bracing visible along the edges of the balconies. There are also multiple cracks on that parapet wall at the roof level which uh, is subject to thermal movement and is missing both a flashing and a coping. Such parapet and curb walls are a tricky subject uh, even under best circumstances because they are exposed um, to the heat on three sides and therefore expand and shrink much more vigorously than the slab underneath in many cases. Here we can see the textbook example of such a cracking with dirty water seeping from underneath. Here we can see that's not the only challenge that this building experiences. A large section of the roof is submerged under water and there are multiple penetrations that don't seem to be adequately addressed. This was an example of 40 years, give or take, old uh, condominium building where the cost of a single square foot ranges between uh, three to four hundred dollars give or take and that is conducting its due diligence repairs. So the problem is not limited to old buildings. For example here is a 
13 or 14 year old uh, tower, a very expensive one, a uh, square foot here can cost as much as $2,000, also undergoing similar repairs. And we can see there is uh, obviously some safety shortcuts taken. Uh, the facade is dotted with uh, stucco repairs that uh, apparently were started on the west side with the areas that are already patched with a new stucco and new head control joints developed by a formwork what appears to be a removable strip unfortunately the majority of those cases regardless of the technology of developing the control joint within the stucco that will keep cracking and it will keep leaking water. And there are two reasons for that. One is the inadequate construction of the concrete masonry behind the stucco, which is typically rigidly affixed to the solid reinforced concrete structure at the heads and at the sides. And the parallel issue is the lack of any dedicated weather resistive barrier, much less any drainage interlayer. Well, thank you for taking the sky tour with me. I am an architect with over a quarter of century of experience in a very narrow field of building enclosures and also a pilot. Please let me know if you enjoyed this tour. It would motivate me to post more.